When Jenny Go Ruth stood before this Parliament on February the 8th to deliver the bombshell news that the contract for duelling the next section of the A9 was not yet going to be awarded, she was keen to blame everyone but herself. From Brexit, of course, to Vladimir Putin, the Transport Minister trotted out every possible excuse for why this SNP promise is worthless. And that promise to fully duel the road between Perth and Inverness by 2025 was made just over 11 years ago. In that time, 10 miles of the 80 that needed to be done have been duelled. That's disgraceful. And there's been a long list of ministers responsible in that time, ending with Ms Gilruth. Let's start with the transport ministers. We've had Keith Brown, Ferry Supremo, Derek Mackay, budding First Minister, Humza Yousaf, whose record of failure takes some beating, Paul Wheelhouse, Graham Day, who got out as fast as he could, and Jenny Gilruth. And what about Cabinet Secretaries? There's been Alex Neil, Nicola Sturgeon. The A9 failure is her legacy among many failures. Keith Brown again. Fergus Ewing, who had transport in his brief for a while and is now angry about the issue. And Michael Matheson. And if we roll it back to when it was first mentioned in the SNP's 2007 manifesto, we could also throw in another hapless transport minister, Stuart Stevenson quite a cast list and all in their own way responsible. Now we've heard this week that construction industry insiders believe it could take until 2050 to see the road fully duelled. That's pretty gloomy and I think they're well wide of the mark, well wide of the mark and we can't have that. Last week one exasperated local sent me his own estimate which was at the current rate of progress it will take until 2137 to finish. 21. 114 years. So things do need to improve somewhat. Now, too many people are being killed on this road. Too many families are being left devastated. Three companies expressed an interest in bidding to duel the section between Tomatin and Moy, but only one did. And yet Jenny Goruth said the rejected bid did not represent value for money for the taxpayer. That came as a big surprise to the company behind that bid. In fact, that company said they were astounded to hear that in the minister's statement. So much so that they got in touch. And given that they employ a large number of people, I thought it was important to talk to them. I hope the transport minister has done the same. I've promised not to name the company because I respect the sensitivities involved, but they have direct experience of dueling the A9 and have a record of delivery. They said they'd offered to meet with Transport Scotland to answer any questions that it had to give it confidence that its price reflected the true cost of delivering the project, but that this offer was not taken up prior to the decision being announced. Why not? This firm spent nearly a year on its tender. That in itself is pretty ludicrous and is part of the issue that civil engineering firms have with Transport Scotland. The normal tendering process elsewhere in Britain can be measured in weeks, not the best part of a year. The other big difference is that here, all the cost risk, if any incidentals are found, is on the contractor. So not surprisingly, prices quoted have to take that into account. Now, prices have risen since this job was first put out to tender. The dithering Scottish Government's original estimate of cost is therefore out of date. So, can the Transport Minister, when she speaks, tell us what she would regard as value for money? If the original anticipated cost was £115 million, what is it now? We do need to know. Now, I don't know what the tender price was, but it's been reported as being between 130 million and 140 million. So that's not so far removed from the original estimate to justify the minister saying it didn't represent value for money. What result does the transport minister expect to achieve by re-tendering? 
a cheaper job with corners cut? Surely to goodness not. The building of such a project is important for the local economy too. Local suppliers were waiting for the job to be awarded. Hotels and B&Bs were geared up for the influx of labour. We simply can't afford to hang around. More lives will be lost. What price are we putting on that? Just what's going on here? Has Jenny Gilruth decided that duelling the A9 is just not affordable? And can she explain why Transport Scotland think it's a good idea to build the remaining nine sections one at a time? No wonder it's taking so long, and no wonder the price continues to spiral. Why can't the road be built in one go? Just have one big contract to do it and get on with it. Laura Hans Hansler of the A9 Dual Action Group said this week, as a country, we can do way better than this. We only have to look at Europe, Germany as a prime example, or even China. They must look on at this project and be dumbfounded as to what is taking us so long. Now, the government amendment talks about the government setting out a timescale for completion of dueling, the dueling programme to the Parliament later in 2023. What the Minister actually said in her earlier statement was that she expected to have some advice from Transport Scotland on the matter by the end of the year. Incredibly, she also said that she too would like to know the new timescale. Well, she decides, surely, not Transport Scotland. Presiding Officer Jenny Gorruth believes it's good to talk. She wants a national conversation about the rail industry. She's having another chat about how we run ferries. And there's even been a consultation on the A9. What we need from the Transport Minister is a little less conversation and a little more action, please. I move the motion in my name. Thank you.